Friends, we don't want to be those that run our lives according to the values of the world and of the leaders of the world. We want to do things according to the kingdom and the king of the kingdom, the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Jesus' disciples in Matthew 18 uh, are arguing about who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, or even just asking the question about it, Jesus has to redirect them. He points them to a child and it's not that he's telling us all to be childish. That's not it. He wants us to have the humility of a, an obedient child. He says, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of, of heaven. So rather than trying to be high and mighty, uh, we want to go with the lowly and turn to our God and bow before him. Now, in our relationship with children, there's so much for us to learn, to to receive one little child in Jesus's name. Look, that you're not going to regret that. You know, that's that's a good thing to do. And, and to lead a little child into sin is a horrible thing to do. So we want to be those that make heaven rejoice and realize, look, the little ones, they have angels in heaven that are looking over them. So there's going to be temptations to sin in this world, but we we want to be people that are helping others to get out of sin and not enticing them towards more sin, especially the weak and the vulnerable. So whatever your your hand or your foot or your eye might be causing you to do is that, look, don't prefer that hand, that foot, that eye. Remember instead that you need to be cognizant of the fact that God can throw your whole body into hell, your whole existence into hell. And, and we need to just humble ourselves before him. He says, it's better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. So the reality of divine judgment is there before all of us, and we have to take that seriously. So, you know, God knows how to get his lost sheep. Now, we have to have have relationships with others that keep these values in mind. So, look, if your brother sins against you, there's certain things you're supposed to do. You know, you go and, and go to him first directly and try and tell him his fault and see whether he repents and that, and then that's kind of stage one. If stage one doesn't seem to be working, we go to stage two. You bring along one or two others in order to, for the testimony to be established by others. And again, now if stage two doesn't work, then maybe stage three, you have to tell it to the assembly. The church, it says here, those who are charged with hearing such cases, tell them about it. And then there may have to be some action taken, recognizing that this person who was a brother, after all, is not repenting of sin and needs to be considered as being outside the body of Christ. But just remember that we're supposed to be people of forgiveness. And, and Peter asks, well, should I forgive somebody seven times? It sounds very extravagant. He said, Jesus says, no. 77 times or seven times 70. It's a very, very large number. And then he tells a parable about someone who is forgiven a great amount. So this king has a servant. This servant owes him a large amount of money. You know, it, it says 10,000 talents. You can work that all out and, and just how how big an amount. It's it's overwhelming, 10,000 talents. And yet he says, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Well, you're not going to be able to pay. It's far more than anyone could pay. Nonetheless, the king, the king forgives him this. So it's a, a, an amazingly generous forgiveness that the king gives us. Now make the Make the analogy here. Look what Christ has forgiven us. Look what God has forgiven us. But then the servant of the king, he meets somebody else who owes him a fairly large amount of money, but doable, you know, to pay back. 
and the person asked for the same mercy, but no, this servant, he he begins to choke him, seizes him, pay what you owe, you know. And this is alarming, so alarming that they go back and tell the king all about it, you see, because, see, look, God has forgiven us so much. We must forgive others. We must. And we must do everything in our power to help people to walk in the pathway of holiness by the power of Jesus at work in our midst. Father, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for the opportunity to forgive others. Thank you for the opportunity we have to lead others in good ways. Help us to do so, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.